As we discussed in the previous lecture, Wilder's career as a novelist sprang directly from her first book-length manuscript, Pioneer Girl, an autobiographical account of her earliest childhood memories in the late 1860s and early 1870s through her marriage to Almanzo, she called him Manly, at the age of 18 in 1884. But before we go any further, let's stop and define autobiography and memoir. Both are written in first person. The narrator is the protagonist of the story and uses personal pronouns throughout the text. I, me, mine, we, us, ours. Here, for example, is the opening line from the memoir, This Dark World. When I was in second grade, our family was nearly wiped out in a single night. And the opening lines from the autobiography, Under My Skin, by Doris Lessing. She was very pretty, but all she cared about was horses and dancing. This refrain tinkled through my mother's tales of her childhood, and it was years before it occurred to me, wait a minute, that's her mother she's talking about. Lessing is clearly telling her own story. So too was Caroline Briggs. As for Wilder, she opens Pioneer Girl with a description of Ma and Pa in Indian Territory. But a paragraph later, she puts herself squarely into the action. I lay and looked through the opening in the wagon over that campfire, and Ma and Pa sitting there. It was lonesome and so still with the stars shining down on the great flat land where no one lived. So, Given this consistency in point of view, are memoirs and autobiographies synonymous? Yes and no. In her book, Writing the Memoir, Judith Barrington defines autobiography as the story of a life. The name implies that the writer will somehow attempt to capture all the essential elements of that life. Then she goes on to explain that a writer's autobiography, for example, is not expected to deal merely with the author's growth and career as a writer, but also with the facts and emotions connected to family life, education, relationships, sexuality, travels, and inner struggles of all kinds. Wilder's Pioneer Girl certainly deals with the facts and emotions connected to all the areas Barrington outlines here although the manuscript doesn't directly touch on her development as a writer, perhaps because that wasn't Wilder's focus. As we've seen, what motivated Wilder, at least initially, and by her own account, was a desire to preserve her father's stories and that sense of living through American history. So does that make Pioneer Girl an autobiography? Here's Barrington again, this time with a definition of memoir. Memoir, on the other hand, makes no pretense of replicating a whole life. Indeed, one of the important skills of memoir writing is the selection of the theme or themes that will bind the work together. From the beginning, Wilder had a thematic purpose to tell her family's story against the backdrop of the American West and the pioneer experience. Granted, in Pioneer Girl, as we've already seen, the Ingalls family didn't always move west. But Wilder had a theme and a purpose. She chose to focus on a definite period in her own life that allowed her to tell a personal story against a very public backdrop, the American frontier. But a memoir is also linked to two other distinct literary genres, the personal essay, and the novel. Again, to quote Barrington, although the roots of the memoir lie in the realm of personal essay, the modern literary memoir also has many of the characteristics of fiction, moving both backward and forward in time, recreating believable dialogue, switching back and forth between scene and summary, and controlling the pace and tension of the story. The memoirist keeps her reader engaged by being an adept storyteller. So 
Memoir is really a kind of hybrid form with elements of both fiction and essay in which the author's voice musing conversationally on a true story is all important. There are two points in this extended passage that we'll come back to in a moment. The idea of recreating believable dialogue and the memoir as true story. But first, this conclusion. Wilder's Pioneer Girl isn't exactly a memoir because Wilder rarely muses on her own story. It is, for the most part, a straightforward retelling of the events of her childhood and adolescence. In short, that aspect of Pioneer Girl seems to fall into the category of autobiography. But Wilder does recreate dialogue, tell stories, and create a larger thematic atmosphere for her narrative, characteristics that seem consistent with memoir. So where does that leave us? Is Pioneer Girl a memoir or an autobiography? I think this quandary illustrates how flexible and shadowy the distinctions are between the two. What I prefer? A clear-cut definition that applies to both. That autobiographical writing relates a true story drawn from aspects of the writer's life. But here again, as we've already seen, Wilder broke an essential rule. She added fictional elements to Pioneer Girl. The clearest example of a strong fictional element in Pioneer Girl relates to the notorious Bender family, which dates from the first revision of Pioneer Girl. As I mentioned in an earlier lecture, the addition of the Benders was probably an attempt to make Pioneer Girl more marketable to magazine editors. Placing a sensational story about mass murder in the opening pages of an unknown writer's pioneer memoir would make the piece unlike any other. But is this unusual, adding such a strong fictional element to a memoir or autobiography? Are there standards writers should adhere to when writing autobiographical nonfiction narrative? Again, the answer is yes and no. But this question is especially important in the context of Wilder and her work since we'll soon launch into the area of autobiographical fiction, 